Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and it's still possible to find $100 or thereabouts Windows PCs out on the market. And I picked up this one recently from Asus. This is called the Vivo Stick, and I think I paid about $110 on Amazon for this one. Your mileage might vary a little bit on pricing. And what this is is a full-fledged Windows 10 computer with a Windows 10 license that uh, you can just plug into the side of your TV or monitor and uh, get to town on. Not too bad of a uh, package here. We'll be putting this one through its paces. It's very similar to many other other uh, stick PCs that we have looked at over the last year or so. I do want to mention, though, in the interest of full disclosure, that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a closer look at the hardware now. It connects up to your monitor or TV with the HDMI plug here on the front. If for some reason you have a hard time fitting this behind your TV, they give you an extension cable in the box for that HDMI connector, and you can also mount it to the side of your TV with an included sticky bracket here as well. So you do have some uh, varying mounting options that if you can fit it behind your TV or monitor, you just have to plug it right in. It is powered by a quad core processor, an Atom uh, Cherry Trail chip from Intel X5Z8350. It has two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, and 802.11ac wireless built in. You have two full-size USB ports here on the side. The blue one is a USB 3 port. The black one here is a USB 2.0 port, and it also has audio in and out uh, with this port right here. Now, one note with the USB 3 port is that if you are running uh, with AC wireless at the 5 gigahertz frequency, you will get a notice on screen warning you about potential interference if you have a USB 3 device plugged in. So they recommend that you either uh, plug that device into the slower port here or uh, slow down your wireless to the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, which will eliminate some of that interference risk. I didn't see that happening with me as I was testing it, but I can see this being an issue because this is a known problem between uh, USB 3.0 and Wi-Fi, especially when they are so close to each other on the same device. And it was good of uh, Asus to warn people about that. You can put a lanyard on this little spot right here so you can wear the computer around your neck if you want around the office. Uh, you also have a power connector here, which is just a standard USB micro connector, and they give you a power adapter in the box. The cable is a little short, though. I would have liked the cable to be longer, but uh, these micro USB cables are very cheap. You shouldn't have a hard time finding one to replace it if you want to get a, a longer cable in there. Uh, the power button is right here, a nice big power button on the back of the device here, and uh, that is pretty much it, a pretty small device that uh, contains an entire Windows computer in a stick. There is a fan built into it to try to cool it off, and as you'll uh, hear me talk about a little later in the review, these things do uh, quite a bit of thermal throttling. And I know a lot of people watch these reviews trying to uh, see if these might be good for home theater or for gaming. Uh, they're really not designed for any of that. Where I see the strength of these uh, small computers computers that don't cost all that much money is for families that uh, maybe have a hard time affording more than one computer or any computer at all. Uh, for around $100 or so, you can get this thing hooked up, running the full version of Windows, get on the internet, run most Windows software, do some programming, do some word processing and some other stuff. But uh, the higher end tasks that I know a lot of enthusiasts might want to do really aren't well suited for these devices because the harder they get pushed, the more they heat up and the more they slow down to prevent overheating. And a lot of folks get disappointed with the performance as a result, and this one certainly has some of those issues. So we'll talk a bit about that when we look at its performance, which we're going to check out right now. We're going to get the monitor on the table here and boot it up. Let's see what it can do. All right, so I got everything all booted up now. I'm running a 1080p 60 video here from YouTube on the Edge browser. And as you can see here, we're getting a decent performance here. No drop frames as we're playing back this video, which has uh, 60 frames per second. It's able to keep up with all of that. And the reason why it is is that uh, these little chips are very well optimized for 1080p video playback, at least insofar as what you might get from uh, YouTube or Netflix or something like that. Now, I have talked about this a lot in the past, that the Edge browser seems to do better with this kind of video than Chrome does, which is surprising because Google owns YouTube and Chrome, but uh, the Microsoft browser just does better on low-end hardware here, as you can see. And uh, we're getting no drop frames and perfect playback along with that uh, AC wireless. I'm going to go visit a website now. You'll see it's a little slower for web browsing, again, just because we don't have a lot of RAM on here. And this is a very slow computer to start with. So it won't be as quick as some of the other PCs we've looked at here on the channel over the last two weeks, but adequate for browsing the web. And if you are trying to add a computer affordably to the family budget here, you'll be able to do 
everything on the web that you'd like in addition to running Windows software uh, pretty effectively on here. So not bad as a web browsing experience, a little bit of a longer wait for things to pop up, but uh, nevertheless, you will be able to do all of that. I do recommend doing one thing at a time on this computer, not having too many things loaded up in the background uh, that will slow it down. And I've got a video that I'll link to down below in the video description where I have a, a similar computer to this one, at least insofar as what it has for a processor, one with two gigabytes of RAM and one with four gigabytes of RAM. And you'll see what the difference that memory makes in uh, the amount of things you can do with the computer at the same time. They definitely run faster with four, but uh, for this price, you're only going to get two. So that's why I recommend doing only one thing at a time. Now, I also have a performance benchmark that I like to run called the Octane Benchmark Test. And on that, we got a score of uh, 6,024, which actually puts it behind the Intel Compute Stick that has uh, pretty much the same processor. That one came in at 6,703. This runs in Google Chrome and uh, is a benchmark, a collection of scores based on the things that uh, many people run on the web these days, different applications and websites and scenarios. So uh, not a bad score, but there are computers running with uh, similar hardware that run faster. And I think it's due to the fact that uh, this is in a smaller form factor. The fan on this one is smaller than it is on the Intel device, so it's not able to uh, get rid of the heat as effectively as that one can. And I think as a result, uh, this one is running a little bit slower. But when you throw tasks at it that it's really designed to do, like word processing and document layout here, you can actually get a lot done and uh, do those things fairly efficiently here. Even though we don't have a very expensive or powerful computer, we're able to do some desktop publishing and uh, some word processing and all the office tasks I think we'll do very well on here also. So again, if you're looking to uh, add another computer to your home or office for a little bit of money, uh, this will get you there and it will do all the things that you might need a computer for in those environments. But one thing these little stick computers don't do very well at is gaming. And we've got uh, Minecraft loaded up here. This is the original version of Minecraft that uh, most people still run. I do have a performance enhancer called Optifine installed. And I'm only getting about 15 or 20 frames per second. It really doesn't do very well uh, with this particular version of Minecraft. You might be able to do better with the, uh, the Windows 10 version, which should run a little smoother, but most people run this version. So this will start to slow down as it heats up and you will see performance degradation over time on this. And this is probably about the best you're going to see out of it. And the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark also reveals that this is slower than the Intel Compute Stick. We got a score of 1,259 uh, versus 1,587 on the Compute Stick. And you can see that the uh, Compute Stick's graphical performance is a little better. Now, of course, this test is really stressing these things to the max. But uh, if it's doing better on that test, it'll do a lot better in things like Minecraft and other casual games. In fact, when I was playing some casual games on here that typically run uh, fairly well on other low-end computers, this one was getting a lot of slowdown as things picked up in the game. And I think it was due to thermal throttling. So I also uh, ran the 3D Mark stress test, which runs the same test over and over again to see if temperature does play a role in performance degradation. And sure enough, that test revealed that it did. So I'm really not going to recommend this as a gaming computer as a result. I think if you're running some old Nintendo games and stuff on here, you know, with emulation, uh, you'll do fine. But uh, other stuff, even things you might buy in the Steam store that, not, that are not all that demanding are not going to perform consistently on here because this really is not a gaming PC. And I'm also not going to recommend this as a home theater device either. Now, it does play back uh, movie files just fine. In fact, we're running a pretty high bitrate Blu-ray MKV file right now, and we've had one drop frame in the last 10 or 15 minutes or so. So really good performance there. But uh, what it doesn't do is 24p playback. So when I plugged it into my TV over there, uh, when it tried to switch the resolution, it dropped it down into this tiny little window, and it really didn't look all that great, as you can see. And that was even after I switched it out of 4K into to 1080 as well. It just doesn't do 24p. It also doesn't do lossless audio formats like DTS HD or Dolby True HD. So if you are a home theater aficionado, 24p and those lossless audio formats are pretty important. Uh, this just doesn't support it. But if you are looking for a basic movie playback device for your monitor or something, it's fine. But uh, just know I would not consider this a home theater uh, box at all. So what's the verdict on this thing? Well, I think if you can get one for about $100 or $120, it's not a bad deal. It's actually a decent casual computing device in that uh, you can do some video playback, but not really home theater stuff. Uh, you can do some decent casual computing like word processing, web browsing, YouTube browsing, Netflix, that sort of thing, Plex. Uh, but it's not so great for gaming. And I think that might actually be attractive for parents who want to get a kid a functional computer to do their work on that won't uh, really entice them to play any games on it because it really won't play those games all that well. So it might be good for that kind of thing. And what's also nice with this is that it has a 12-month warranty 
warranty, which many of these cheap computers don't have. Some have a 90-day warranty. Some come from companies that you never heard of before that provide no support at all. So to have a 12-month warranty on uh, something this inexpensive, I think, is a uh, pretty good deal. So again, if you can find this for less than $120 or so and are aware of its limitations that I pointed out in this video, I think you'll be quite happy with it because it is a, a decent little computing device for the money. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.